Welcome to Deck Analysis and Testing. Today we're looking at Sky Striker. Sky Striker is one of my favorite decks. My favorite thing to do in a Master Jewel is to blind second with 36 spells in a 40 card Sky Striker deck. So, needless to say, this deck focuses on a lot of spells. Each spell can be used only if you have no monsters in the main monster zone, and they also have a bonus effect when you have three or more spells in the graveyard. And those effects are really good. So, what this deck aims to do is to cycle through multiple Link 1s and activate spells over and over again until you crack your opponent's board wide open. This deck really prefers going second and really struggles going first when you only open with the normal spells that only work when your opponent has stuff. So let's have a look at what this deck does. So uh, in this free-to-play version, we can only have one copy of Ray, which is obviously not very ideal, but we do have some amount of searches to help us get into our only monster in the deck. So let's talk about that. Sky Striker Ray's, uh, Sky Striker Ace Ray. This is the only main deck monster that we are playing. If you're playing uh, the expensive version, you could theoretically play hand traps. I like to not play them even in the expensive version, just because I think it's more consistent to play more spells, so you can use the good effects of each of your Sky Striker spells. Uh, Ray has two effects. It has a quick effect to tribute itself to special summon a Sky Striker Ace monster from your extra deck to the extra monster zone, and also while this card is in your graveyard, if they face up a Sky Striker Ace Link monster is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of your opponent's card effect, you can revive this card from your graveyard. So basically, even though uh, this card can only bring out the Link ones, it, it can still revive itself over and over again when your Link ones get destroyed. So as long as uh, the ray that you revive doesn't get destroyed immediately, you can basically have an infinite grind game. And uh, let's actually have a look at the Link monsters before we continue. So here are the cards that you actually get from the skill. These are not released as obtainable cards, but you can also use them if you use the new skill that we got with this deck. So let's have a look at the Link monsters. We have the only Link that is in the game, Shizuku. This card is the ultra rare in the same box as Rei, and it is basically a really good piece in the grind game that allows you to search a Sky Striker spell that you don't have in your graveyard from your deck to your hand in your end phase. And also if you make this card during your opponent's end phase, it will still work because uh, Ray could quick effect summon a uh, link from your extra deck during both players' turns. So you could also trigger this during your opponent's turn if you want to. Next is Kagari. This card is really good at recycling your spells because none of your spells are actually once per turn. So what you can do is you can use your spell and then just link it into Kagari, grab back your spell, and use it again. And also this card gains a bit of attack, which is quite nice if you want to deal damage or beat over some of your opponent's monsters. Next is Hayate. This card can attack directly, which is quite huge in dueling specifically because we only have 4,000 life points each, so it is a lot easier to uh, win with this card than it is to win in the TCG or in a Master Jewel. This card is a lot less good in other ways, um, mainly because it mills a Sky Striker card from your deck to your graveyard, but because we don't have a main phase 2, we can't immediately add it to our hand with Kagari. We kind of have to wait till our next turn or use a multi roll to set it, which is less good, but it's still fine, and also it helps uh, put more spells in the graveyard to use the spell's good effects. And finally we have the defensive link, which is Kaina. This card can basically negate an attack, which is a really good thing to do when you uh, tag out for a link with Ray during your opponent's turn, so you can stop an attack, and also even if your opponent has another monster that attacks your link, you can still um, at least summon back the Ray from the graveyard. So yeah, these are the links, and we also get a really, really good spell from the skill. We got two copies of Engage. This is the best spell in the entire deck. You always want to see this card, no matter what. This card is your searcher. It searches any Sky Striker card, including Ray, and from your deck to your hand, it is not once per turn, so you can just use it and then uh, get it back to your hand with Kagari and then use it again. And also, if you have three or more spells in the graveyard, you just draw a card for free. 
And that's that's insane. And also, you can a lot of times use this card more than once in a single turn because of Kagari, and that just it just draws you new cards and searches two cards from your deck. So that, it's insane. This card is just insane, and uh, it is extremely reasonable that it is locked behind a skill because otherwise it's it's just a bit too good. Okay, so let's have a look at the other cards quickly. We have more searchers for Ray because that is our main monster to make all of our leg ones. We have a reinforcement of the army to search Ray because she is a warrior. We have uh, Area Zero which has a chance face effect to activate three cards and if you open with any Sky Striker card you add it to your hand and then send whatever card you have on field to the graveyard. But um, if even if you don't have uh, even if you don't open anything, the card just stays on the field. And uh, we have a multi-roll, which also helps increase the consistency by sending the field spell to the graveyard, because when it is sent to the graveyard, you can actually summon Ray directly from your deck, so no gambling, which is pretty nice. And if you have uh, Jamming Waves, which is from another mini box, unfortunately, which uh, we will be using in the expensive version to not only pop your opponent's back row, it also can pop your field spell, which will trigger its effect to summon a monster from your deck, which is pretty nice. Uh, next up, we have the board breakers. We have afterburners, which can destroy a monster on the field, and if you have three or more spells, you pop a back row as well. And the back row pop is non-targeting, which is pretty nice. Next is Shark Cannon. Shark Cannon can target a monster in your opponent's graveyard and banish it, but if you have three or more spells, you can choose to special summon it to your field permanently, so it doesn't you know, give it back to your opponent or anything, but it cannot attack. So uh, keep this in mind, this does come up a lot because um, oftentimes you want to deal a lot of damage in a single turn, but um, Shark Cannon just has this little line of text that prevents you from doing that, so just don't do stupid things. Next is Eagle Booster. This card can target one face-up monster on the field. It is unaffected by any effects except for itself, and also if you have three or more spells, it also cannot be destroyed by battle. This is really good because you will only always have one Link 1 on the field, which is really vulnerable to anything. But if you have this card, you can make it unaffected and also potentially make it undestroyable. So uh, if your opponent tries to attack over it, which is real realistically going to destroy your monster because you don't really have a lot of attack, you can at least make it not be destroyed by a battle. And finally, for our last spell, we have Widow Anchor. This card is a negate. It can target a face-up monster, negate its effects, and if you have fewer more spells, in the graveyard, you also get to steal it until the rest of the turn. This card does allow the monster that you steal to attack. So what you can do is you can basically use it as an econ. You can just um, clear everything else, leave one monster on your opponent's field, use Widow Anchor, steal it so your opponent has no monsters left to block your attacks and just OTK. And also we have a multi-roll which I touched upon. This card has an effect to send a card from your field to the graveyard to make all of your spells spell speed 4, which means your opponent cannot respond to any of your spell activation. So if you activate, for example, Afterburners, and then your opponent wants to flip a, a back row because otherwise you're going to pop their back row, but they can't do that because uh, if you activate multi-roll beforehand, they just cannot respond. So uh, if they have a back row or monster quick effect, they will have to do it before you activate the effect of multi row. So you can uh, basically just force out interruptions. And also it has a second effect to reset any of your spells uh, equal to the amount of spells you activated this turn, and including in your opponent's turn. So you can basically just set a whole bunch of spells and use them over and over again, but it does get banished when you use them for the second time. Which is unfortunate, but it's already really good. And it also it's also less good in a dual links because we only have three zones and this already takes up one. So you basically only have two zones left and you probably want one to be open because you want one to be free for you to use spells from your hand. So yeah, it's a bit cumbersome, but it's it's still good. And finally, we have this little tech that I like to play, which is Jar of Avarice, because uh, especially in this free-to-play deck, we don't have a lot of monsters. So uh, once Ray um, 
gets destroyed, and then uh, even if it comes back from the graveyard, if your opponent destroys it again, you basically have no follow up because you only have one ray. You only have one of each link, so yeah, you basically just have no plays otherwise. So it's, I think it's pretty nice to just have you know, some copies of Jar of Avarice just in case our opponent does break through our board. We can still at least shuffle those back to the deck and still have monsters to keep playing. Uh, this is less crucial in the expensive version where we have three rays and three Shizukus, but um, in this free to play version, I would really suggest playing Avarice. For the extra deck, it's just generic links, there's not much to talk about because you probably won't be making these like ever. These are just like emergency access links that you might very, very, very occasionally make by using the monsters that you steal from your opponent to link them away. But uh, otherwise, you will never use them. Okay, so let's have a look at the expensive version. It's basically pretty much the same, but except uh, we have free rays and free Shizukus, and uh, we have um, free jamming waves, and this also destroys the field spell, which helps you get into your combo so it's more consistent. Uh, we have we still play one jar of Avarice. I'm just testing this out, but um, I probably will drop this in the future because it's just kind of, yeah, it doesn't really do a whole lot. It kind of just makes you bet a bit better to grind game, which um, the expensive version probably doesn't really need that crucially, not like the free-to-play version. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna put one copy for the time being, but I probably will drop this eventually. For the extra deck, it's just better generic links uh, in addition to free Shizukus. Okay, let's have a look at the replays now. This deck does excel going second because of all of the removal spells that we have. But uh, even if we go first, it's not that big of a deal because we still have quick play spells that we can use during our opponent's turn. As you can see, we opened pretty well. Uh, the Rota is pretty annoying because we only have one ray in this free to play version, so this Rota is actually dead in our hand, but. Yeah, I guess it's a spell, so if we have the field spell, at least we can send it to the graveyard or something. Our opponent is playing Ogdo Addict, and uh, I don't think they're playing very well. As you can see, they, I think they mess up their combo somehow, and they end up with a very unimpressive board. But um, even if they do end up on something better, we could probably play through it, because we did open pretty well. And also, just a Shark Cannon is going to be really good in this matchup, because uh, the Octo Addict's tribute for cost in the graveyard, so if we chain Shark Cannon, they still lose their monsters on field, but we still get to prevent them from summoning their monsters back, which is really nice and game winning, basically. But our premise is just gonna end on a single level 8, which doesn't really do a whole lot. We're gonna use Area Zero to send a Rota that we can't use, and wow, we find another engage, that's crazy. Uh, we're gonna use Engage, but before we do that, he's going to send a random card from my hand, which pitches an engage. That's fine, we're just gonna use the second engage, I guess. We're gonna grab a multi roll and draw a card for free. That's this card's just crazy. We're gonna activate multi roll, summon the ray, just link into our Kagari, and we're gonna grab engage again. And we're gonna activate it because it is not once per turn. We're gonna grab after bonus so we can pop up his monster. You can draw a card, it's Widow Anchor, that's pretty good. I'm gonna pop opponent's monster, attack for 2000, and then leave a zone 3 for our uh, multi to set a shark cannon back. And this shark cannon is gonna do a lot of work when our opponent can only combo off from the graveyard. He's gonna tribute a monster to attempt to revive his monster. We're gonna chain shark cannon to banish it. Our opponent will activate MST. We'll just chain with the anchor just so we can use a multi effect. effect. Uh, he's going to add back an octo anchor to his hand, but Realistically, there's nothing much you could do with only one Octoactic on field because most of them need two tributes. And when he attacks our monster, we can just tag out into Ray, which tags out into Shizuku. And then we trigger multi roll, which triggers Shizuku. And yeah, that's pretty much game over. Okay, let's have a look at our second game. We're going second once again, which is pretty nice always. And another good thing about going second is that we get an extra draw, which is really nice in this deck where we don't actually have a lot of consistency tools. 
Uh, yeah, and that is one of the biggest problems with this deck is that it doesn't really have a lot of ways to get into Ray. Even in the expensive version, we only have three Rays, one Rota, and two Engage in the 22 card deck, which is not really consistent. But still, fine, I guess. We're gonna use Engage to grab multi roll before we activate our spell so we get value off of it during the end phase. Uh, our opponent has a really annoying uh, continuous spell that prevents us to target his monsters, so we have to somehow get rid of it before we can actually target his monsters, at least during the main phase. We can still uh, use Widow Anchor during the battle phase or uh, standby phase, but uh, we cannot use the Afterburners to pop his monster. So unfortunately, we just have to do it the, the old-fashioned way and just attack. And uh, he does have the Fusion spell, which lets him make a uh, really big fusion and this is basically a spell trap negate by pitching stuff from his hand so even though we do target his monster with the with the anchor in the battle phase he can still negate it using his fusion monster pitching the compulse he just drew off the top uh we can still make a ray and then tag it to shizuku and because he doesn't have any more monsters to attack we can leave the shizuku on our field for the end phase and we can just grab a card for free and we're gonna activate the end gauge and then uh grab a copy of afterburners and we can we still need to out the um, black horse somehow and even if we had uh jamming waves in the expensive version we still can't really destroy the face up spell but what we can do is we can pop our own monster and then uh, use its second effect to pop the spell, and then now we use its second afterburners. What well, now that we can finally target our first monster, we can now pop it and then uh, banish it with uh, our shark cannon, and then use the effect of multi royal, set back our two traps, and our opponent just screw. They just don't really think they have a lot they can do with one card in their hand. Okay, in the third and final game, we are against U Bell Neos, you know, an actual good deck. Our is going to activate their skill during the start of the game, so we know that they are definitely on U Bell. He's going to normal some Neos, just as usual, grabbing Super Poly as well. And uh, we could actually play through Super Poly pretty well if we have multi roll, because we can use the effect uh, to make it unrespondable, and then we can just pop their back row before we can before they have an opportunity to actually use the effect. Uh, we open three cards. We actually don't get the ray because we value the multi roll more. We can use the multi roll to send a field spell, and the field spell can get us ray that way. And then we can make the link one. We're gonna make Hayate because we can't actually get rid of any of our opponent's monsters. I'm too big. Uh, our opponent will activate uh, offerings to the doomed, and we can use equal booster to protect our monster. And then we can use Shark Cannon to just get another monster on our field so we don't get OTK that easily. We're gonna set to at the end phase using the effect of multi roll. And uh, even though that monster on our field does prevent us from using the effect of our quick plays, uh, we can use them as long as our opponent gets rid of it during their battle phase, which they did. So now during the end phase, we can actually use the effect of Shark Cannon grabbing ourselves an extra monster so we can have something to send off of our multi-roll during our next turn. We're gonna set um, an engage with multi-roll and then since we don't have an engage in the graveyard anymore, we can grab our second engage using the Shizuku that we summon. And now we can grab Afterburners, pop in Neos and uh, Super Poly, and then use an engage to grab uh, Wither Anchor, drawing another card, and we're gonna use the Widow Anchor is stealing his monster, and that is enough for lethal, and our opponent will be scooping. Good game.